Walking these old streets, you get the feeling that there are endless things to do in Medina and Rabat. Behind me you can find the Collegiate Church of St. Paul and this is St. Paul's monument. St. Paul himself stayed here after he was shipwrecked 60 AD, which is why the church is named after him. I'm standing on top of the catacombs because back in the day they used the catacombs to bury the dead. It was deemed unhygienic to bury them in the city of Medina so they figured why not build catacombs to just ditch them right there and also yeah just keep the city clean. Rabat in Malta has multiple catacombs. There's the one from St. Paul's, then there's the one from St. Agatha's, and there's the one from St. Cathaldus, which is really small compared to the other ones. To get to the two main catacombs, you just cross St. Cathaldus and follow this small alleyway. to St. Paul's catacombs, you have some information about how burials were performed before Christ and shortly after Christ. For instance, in old Roman times, they had women who were hired to mourn and praise the deceased. They were called Prophecae. And here you can see the little gifts that people were given to journey back into the afterlife. two outdoor areas to the catacombs. This is the eastern part, over there is the western part. You need to keep your ticket to go through the gate again. And these little houses here lead to the catacombs to go down. Fun fact, the site was used as a quarry first before they turned it into a cemetery. You can also learn more about how burial procedures changed over time. For instance, in the beginning, people were buried individually, when over time, I guess when they realized they don't have enough space, they allowed people to be buried in a whole catacomb by themselves as a group as a family or just a section of it and if you didn't have the money for that you can join a membership pay a monthly fee and then you can be assured that you had a tomb to yourself after you were passing the catacombs weren't mostly christian actually a lot of them were heathen and some of them were also jewish which you can see by the symbols for each catacomb so you know what to expect and if you don't want to see each and every one of them there are must-see signs so you know this one is not to be missed for instance this one has incised menorah and sculptural decorations in the tomb down below so let's check that one out This is where the people used to lie instead of in a coffin. It was carved into stone. Don't expect this to be like in Indiana Jones because there are no skulls and bones around here. It's just the cut out graves. This is super narrow <laughs> and small. If you look closely, you can see the parts from the smoke that came from the menorah that they used to light up the chambers, but it's really hard to spot. And this is my short detour to Medina and Rabat on Malta. If you want to see more, of course, there's so many more museums. There's the Aviation Museum, there's the Domo Romano, there's the Vigna Curat Museum. So many old mansions and more catacombs and you can spend multiple days here if you want to and if you want to soak in all of the historical things to do in Malta, this is where you need to be. I will have more videos up on Malta, so subscribe to see them all, give me a like and thumbs up to see and let me know how you like it and I hope you stick around, stay travel tastic and see you soon. I'm below the earth, I am in the catacombs of St. Paul in Rabat and you can see the graves of a lot of old Roman people here. Of course, there are no more people in it, but that's creepy.